In 2011, Goldman Sachs invested in a small, private company in the world's fastest growing big economy, India. They understood something extremely important. If India wants to be a regional or even a world power and compete with China, they need only one thing. No, it's not money. It's not military power, it's something much more fundamental. With a population of 1.4 billion, India recently surpassed China as the world's most populous nation. And as per estimates, its population will keep growing in the coming decades. India can also boast about having a healthier demographic than China, with more people in the working and military age. The reason why I'm making this comparison between these two countries is that in many ways, they are similar to each other. They are neighbors to each other. Maybe you can see them on the map. And they are both rising powers. But there is one big advantage that China has over India. And that is China is richer. And so is its population. Adjusted for cost of living and inflation, India's GDP is at the same level as China's was 15 years ago. India can certainly catch up in a few decades, but for them to do that, they will need to invest in something of fundamental importance. Energy. There is a positive feedback loop between economic growth and energy. A country requires energy in order to grow. The more the country is developing, the more energy it will require. And as the population becomes richer, they are going to use even more energy. In the past, maybe they could afford only a washing machine. Now they are buying a microwave oven, they are buying other appliances. So all these are contributing to more energy usage and more consumption leads to even more economic growth and this economic growth demands even more energy. But India's energy production is at the same level that China's was in the year 2000, that is 24 years ago. China's energy production grew exponentially in the last two decades and we should expect the same from India in the coming decades. Both countries have a common issue. They have low fossil fuel resources and they have to rely on imports, mainly from Russia. But nowadays, nobody wants to be too friendly with Russia. For this reason, India has to look for its energy from somewhere else. What about the sun and the wind? Renewable energy production has increased at a fast rate in the last few years in India and it is expected that over the long term it will keep increasing at a fast rate. There's also the issue of climate change and I think that most countries all around the world, including India, wants to mitigate the effects of climate change and shift towards renewable energies. Today, most of the energy production of India comes from coal and as per the 2022-2027 National Electricity Plan, the Indian government is banning the building of new coal plants. Most of India's power generation comes from the government or from big corporations like Tata and Adani. And they are all a little skeptical to venture into renewable energies because these big utilities, they are known for their stability. Some of them are long-term dividend aristocrats and they would not take that risk to take so much debt and make massive investments in renewable energies. You don't want a utility company to go bankrupt. What these utility companies will do instead is smash the like button. No, that's what you do. What these utility companies will do instead is delegate the task of building these new solar and wind power plants to smaller companies, to independent power producers, which will assume most of the risk and eventually they will sell the electricity to the big utilities. This is a common practice all over the world, including in the US, where for example, one of the largest utilities, Next Era Energy, founded a new company, Next Era Energy Partners, and the job of Next Era Energy Partners is to develop renewable energy projects. They are handling the transition to renewable energies and eventually they sell the electricity that they produce to the payright company Next Era Energy. So it is a win-win for both companies. The utility companies, the big companies, they can say that they are maintaining the high dividends, they are not taking that much risk. And then the smaller companies, they can grow at a faster rate without all the bureaucratic process of the bigger payright company. If we look at the balance sheet of Next Era Energy Partners, we'll see that they have a lot of debt. And this is common for all the companies in the renewable energy sector. Because to build these projects, they have to take a lot of debt. And with the rising interest rate, these debts are becoming costlier to refinance. And even some of the debt have variable interest rates, which means that with the rising interest rates, the interest expenses of these companies are going to increase, which eventually led to a crash of the stock price of these renewable energy companies. This is a common trend among all the small renewable energy producers, but there is an exception to the rule. 
Renew Energy Global. Even if the stock price has declined, the fundamentals are still looking good. The stock price is down because the company has been grouped together with the other renewable energy companies. And Goldman Sachs is somewhat to be blamed for this. Goldman Sachs is an investment bank. And what an investment bank is looking for is to maximize profits. So when Goldman Sachs invested in Renew Energy Global in 2011, it was a small company that helped the company to grow. Eventually, when the renewable energy market was booming in 2021, they decided to have an IPO for the company. That's how Renew Energy Global was put together in the same basket as the other renewable energy companies traded on the Nasdaq. Goldman Sachs then sold all their shares to the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board. And today, this institution owns over 50% of Renew Energy Global. Therefore, the stock price of Renew Energy Global is today trading below its IPO price and below the price at which the Canadian pensioners bought. I have taken the opportunity to buy shares of RNW. The more the shares are falling, the more I am buying. It is today 1.5% of my portfolio on eToro. This is not a sponsored video in any way, but I am an elite popular investor on eToro. You can copy or follow my investments there. Apart from being a renewable energy company listed on the Nasdaq, Renew Energy Global has little to do with its American peers. For one, it's business operations is only in India, not in America. Usually the central government of India or the state governments are going to launch a bidding process for an auction market where the developers can bid for new projects. Let's say the government of the state of Rajasthan needs more power. They will launch an auction market and then invite the developers to bid for the projects. They compete on price and other factors such as how much time will it take to build the project. The winning developer will then sign a PPA a power purchase agreement with the government to sell electricity at a certain rate for let's say 25 years. As such, Renew Energy Global is today generating 1.9% of the total electricity of India. This number keeps growing and it is currently second place behind Adani Green Energy in terms of renewable energy. In just a couple of years, it has been able to overtake other giants such as Tata Powers or even JSW. Even if it doesn't grow, even if it doesn't become number one, I believe it can be. But let's say it doesn't become number one. The mere fact that the Indian economy is growing, that the demand for renewable energy in India is growing, it means that this is an expanding market and Renew Energy Global is definitely going to profit from that. That's how Renew Energy Global has been able to sustain revenue growth of over 10% per year in US dollars over the past five years. And compared to US companies, they have much better margins. It's because labor is of course cheaper in India, all the raw materials cost cheaper to produce. And we know that there has been decline in production of solar panels, in production of wind turbines in recent years. And definitely this is going to improve the margins of our NW. If you look at the income statement of Renew Energy Global, you will notice that the company is not profitable. And there are two main reasons for this. First one has to do with accounting. It has nothing to do with the operations of the business. The way that the accounting works is that when the company is building a project, the total cost of the project is going to be capitalized on the balance sheet. But eventually when the project is completed and is in operation, there is going to be an additional expense called finance costs. In a way, they are amortizing that value that has been put on the balance sheet. But it is not a cash expense. Today, the finance cost is one of the largest costs. In reality, the company is not losing any cash because of that. And therefore, if we look at the owner's earnings of the company, we should not be worried. You will see that they have high capital expenditures, but most of it is for growth. They are a fast growing company. They are expanding. There's a lot of capital in expenditures involved for growth and less of it is for maintenance. And according to the definition of owner's earnings given to us by Warren Buffett, we should account only for maintenance capital expenditures when calculating the owner's earnings. If we look at the total energy generation of Renew Energy Global today, without them expanding, they are a profitable company. They can maintain their current business without losing money. The second reason why they have a net loss is because of the huge 
interest expense. As we saw, this is a sector with companies with huge debt. Unlike most of the US companies, however, most of their debt are at fixed rates. So there is no risk that the company will be so much affected by rising interest rates. Besides, most of their debt are in their local currency. So whatever's happening all around the world is not really going to affect the fact that they are growing in their home country using their home currency for most of their debt. Therefore, the fact that the stock price is falling along with its American peers because of rising interest rates is not justified for this company. Investing in Renew Energy Global is betting both on the growth of the Indian economy and renewable energies. That's why I'm investing in this company. Another company that I'm currently investing in is this one. Have a nice day and goodbye.